Hi, I'm Brian with Pioneer Builders. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about a thermal retrofit. So we're already done with it. We've gone through all of the steps, but basically when I built this house years ago, I didn't have the understanding that I do today. So what I essentially did is I didn't put a thermal break at the slab edge. There is sub slab insulation. It's just not in the right place. Well, my wife and son did a little bit of a barbecue project in the past and they're gonna end up extending it. Because of that, it was like, well, if we're already gonna be doing a little bit of excavation, let's go ahead and see if we can upgrade this thermally. So you're gonna see a variety of materials, the steps that it goes to get to look like this. And I have to tell you, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Follow along, I'm pretty sure you're gonna learn something. The first thing we're gonna do is just see whether or not our siding is level. So I got a Dovo laser. It's a little bit faint, but let's see. You can see that. It's three and three eighths or six sixteenths. If we come down here to this corner, and what we're doing is seeing if it's sagging, that is just a smidge over three inches. And then if we come over here, we are at three and, what would you say that is? Five sixteenths? So you're dealing with an imperfect situation. For that ledger, we need, according to the mason, about three and three quarters inches. So I'm gonna use my lowest point, which is actually down here, and I'm gonna actually come down four inches because I'm gonna do a little bit of waterproofing later on. So if I come down four inches and I'm gonna butt the bottom of this, All right, now I'm gonna make kind of a level line here. And that should help me when it comes to measuring and seeing how far away from this line I am. Sometimes I just wish I had more hands. All right, so if I measure from there, that is about seven and six eighths seven and three quarters from that, from the laser. So if we come over here, and what was my number? You can say it out loud. Seven and three quarters. Seven and three quarters. And now let's see if I can find, you might be standing in the laser. Nope, there we go. So if I hold that there, seven and Three quarter. All right, I'm gonna level this over. We're kind of working behind this pipe. Just get that. There we go. And what that's gonna do is help. Well, I missed it by a smidge, but I think we'll be okay. All right, now we're gonna grab our chalk line. Get that on the line. And then I'm gonna, I wasn't gonna hand that to you. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing with the chalk line. You've got gravity that you're contending with. So I'm gonna need you, Ethan, in the middle of the wall, although it's a fairly short wall, to push, yeah, go ahead and snap it. That'll be good enough. Snap in the middle. Yep. And that, my dear friend, is the bottom of the ledger. So I'm just gonna verify that I didn't blow anything here. And just take my tape and make sure we're a minimum of th four inches from our siding. Oh, that looks pretty nice. Coming down here, let's see, I'm kind of far away. That's four inches there, so I'm kind of eyeballing that. I think we're still okay. And one more place. About four inches. So I think our math was right. Now all of this is gonna be covered up. Things in construction aren't perfect, 
That is 18, just make sure I've got that right. I think that's about 18 inches. So I'm just gonna write 18 inches down here to our chalk line. What would you say that is? 18 and a quarter. So 18, and I'm putting four. I was always taught to measure things to the 16th. I haven't been doing this a whole lot lately, so my fractions aren't too good. But 16th is pretty reasonable, 18 and nine. So that's where those are, and that just kind of lets me know that I'm about in the right world. 18, 18, four, 18, nine. I'm gonna measure each one of these. We're gonna do a layout, and then we'll start piecing them in. We're just about to rip down our two by sixes. The reason we went with two by sixes is because the rock wool is four inches thick. Actual size of a two by six is five and a half inches. We gotta rip it down, two by four, just wouldn't cut it. So you set your fence to four inches. Then for the height, a little bit beyond inch and a half, try to keep that as close to what you're cutting as possible. And now let's let her rip. Oh man, two dad jokes in the space of a minute? Unbelievable. <laughs> Okay, we have our material cut to width, but we're gonna to need to cut it to height, and now we're gonna mark layout. So on your end wall, you have an inch and a half for a stud, and each one of our uh, rock wool bats are 24 inches. So 24 plus inch and a half brings us over to here, 25 and a half inches. Now from there is where you really start your 24 on center. So 24, 48, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, we're just finishing up our layout. So that's at 16 feet. And then this is going to end up getting a stud basically here. And so you've got about an inch and a half. This piece here for the rock wool is just going to be a little piece that fits in there. All right, so now we have all of that done. What we're gonna do is put this wood preservative on the cut ends. Oh, I'll go ahead and throw some gloves on. The cool thing about what's about to happen is I'm gonna get to take a break and Ethan asked to do some of the painting. So let's go ahead and, there we go. And now I get to be the camera guy. I do not want that to spill over. And let's watch him get to work. So we got that phase done. Now we're gonna, oh, there's a little magnet on there. That's kind of cool. All right, just gonna dump this back in. Waste not, want not. So the next phase for what we're gonna be doing is installing these guys. This is an HGAM. H is Hurricane Gusset Angle for Masonry. So this is the gusset part. This is the angle part. 
And it's kind of cool. If you look here, it says rafter or truss. You can use these on cast in place concrete like we've got here, or you could do it with like a CMU block. If you do a CMU block, you want to make sure that you use the anchors that come with these. In this case, since I've got cast in place, I actually get to get away with a shorter SD screw. You'll see that in a minute. Let me show you how this is going to attach. It's kind of nice. What they do is they show you where the rafter or truss side of this goes and then where the concrete or CMU block side goes. So that is going to go up against this. The wood, I'm going to end up pre-attaching them. Then you're going to use the Titans after drilling into the concrete to fasten this to the concrete. And then you're going to use the SDSs for the wood side of things. So here's what the tools are. That fits in there. I need to get a bit for this guy. And then we've got this Metabo. Oh, let me get it off safety. And that's what's going to drill in. This is a 3 16 inch drill bit. Lots of pieces to this whole thing, but we're getting closer all the time. Got the 3 8 inch bit. I have to do an extension. And now we're pre-installing the hardware. See if I can do it this time without it popping off. Now let's see what that looks like on the wall. For the Titan turbos, you want to make sure that you are going to have the embedment in the concrete that you need. So here's just a little trick. You take the head of it and you put it backwards and then make that obvious enough. Now when it's spinning, you can see how far you're going to get embedment. that is the end of another day we just don't have the batteries you know we're borrowing this from my brother Tim at awesome framers so we did a pretty good job it is date night we're gonna call it a day see you tomorrow it's a new day let's get back at it And that's a wrap for day 4,672. Someday we might be done. We'll see you tomorrow or whenever we come back. We're back on the job. We're now gonna install this Durkin Delta dry and lath. This side is the dimple mat and it is gonna go up against these studs. And then on this side, this is the lath. So this is a fiberglass product. It's we cut this off. This is a fairly old piece of material, but you can kind of see how the glue is adhered to that. And so what we're going to do, we already measured it. It's about 224 feet, uh, inches. It'd be really long if it was 224 feet. And we've got uh, shears and we also have a knife to cut it. So let's see which one works better. I'm just going to eyeball it coming down here, 224 inches, and it already has kind of my straight lines here. So that's pretty easy. Now let's see how this goes, and I'm going to come this direction on it. So I'm cutting towards this and not away from it. Maybe if I had some backing on it, it would be better.
So that was pretty easy either way. The thing of it is, if you're gonna install it, and I'm thinking this is probably four feet, if you're gonna install it this dimension, nope, uh, 42 inches, three and a half feet. If you're doing full mats, sh uh, the shears or the scissors or this would be fine when you're doing a short dimension. We're gonna actually have to rip it down to 19 inches. It'll take longer doing it by hand. Um, not too terribly long, but just keep that in mind with which tool. So either one's fine. Just keep track of what you think makes the most sense given your setup. And there you have it. We're now done with this step. We're gonna get the angle iron installed, the brick over the top, the brick facing, and I wanna get it done sooner than later. Who knows, maybe, just maybe, we'll finish this before the summer's out. As you can see, we now have our thin brick on. You can see some of the detailing in here. This is the angle iron. But one of the things that I wanted to point out, you see that little piece back in there? I'll show you that material, but all that is, is sill sealer, which is essentially just a foam. You might be used to seeing that in terms of insulation. And that's just to give us a little bit of an offset for a thermal break. One other thing that I want to show you is I want to protect this from any water that could get behind there to make sure that it kicks out. And I'll show you the product we're using for that. So there's a closer look at it. You can get different sizes. I picked this up at Lowe's. Uh, this is the Fentrum. So this is what I'm using for my flashing tape. What's cool about this is it doesn't require any primer, so I'm able to adhere it directly to the concrete, and if all goes well, it'll also adhere to that steel or the iron. Let's give it a shot. Well, we finally finished the work, and I'm going to take you around back and show you what that looks like. But I thought it would be good to show you the front of this house, the architecture, and it'll make more sense why we did what we did. There's a variety of different ways that we could have finished it, but you can see that what we did here is we also used that thin brick. Uh, fairly simple detailing, simple coursing, but now what we're able to do is take this and tie it in below. Let me show you the final product. Let me show you what we have back here now. So all of that work has now been concealed. We've got our soldier coursing, little slope sill, and I think it looks absolutely dynamite. Um, there's more work that we're gonna be doing back here. We're gonna probably dig a little trench, put some free draining gravel, and then all of these pavers are gonna come over here. I've been filming this for so long, I literally don't remember what I've talked about in the past. The primary reason we're doing this is because we're extending our barbecue area. So last summer, Elizabeth and Ethan installed this. This is going to end up getting pulled out. We're going to set it all to grade. That's just a whole lot more and I think this video is already long enough and we'll try to keep it focused on that thermal retrofit. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a follow at Pioneer Builders over on Instagram. Now go build something.